Hi folks, I'm Nancy and my channel, A Square Pillow Isn't Square, is the place to learn anything and everything you ever wanted to know about home deck sewing. This video is the second part of my tutorial on drapery lining, which is an extremely important yet very misunderstood element of any window treatment. The first video, not very creatively called drapery lining part one, explains what lining is, what it's for, the benefits of using it, and even when you shouldn't use it. So be sure and check that one out if you haven't already. This video is going to dig into the different types of lining, what they do, what they're for, and when to use them so you can choose the right lining for your project with confidence. The first part of the video is kind of like school, a bit boring but important, so stick with me here. As you can see by this lining sample book, there are a lot of options to choose from. Although white and ivory are the most common colors of drapery lining, it also comes in several colors for when you want a contrast lining that shows on the front of the treatment. In this video, we're going to focus on the three most important types of lining products. And the first and most common type is basic woven drapery lining. You will find this in different weights and in both white and ivory in any home deck fabric store, so how do you know which one to buy? If you read the label on the back of the sample or on the tag in the store, you'll see that lining is generally either all cotton or a cotton polyester blend, often with a finish that is applied to one side that gives it a slight sheen and helps to resist moisture. In a lot of situations, it's good to use fabrics with similar fabric content on the same treatment. So if your decorative fabric is 100% cotton, you might want to use 100% cotton lining. If your fabric is a cotton polyester blend, you might choose a cotton polyester blend for your lining. This way, not only will the layers in your treatment respond the same way to temperature and humidity, but if you wash or dry clean it, there will be less chance of one fabric staying the same when the other one shrinks or stretches. You will also see the width of the lining on there. Most home decor fabrics are about 54 inches wide, so it's no coincidence that the width of most home deck lining is also 54 inches, but it does come in other widths. So just take note of the width when you purchase it. You want to choose a lining that's the same width or just a few inches narrower than your decorative fabric. The other important thing you'll see is the weight of the lining, which is shown in ounces. That lets you know how dense or heavy the lining is. Here you see a few lining samples that range between five and seven ounces per yard of fabric. Five ounces is a good lightweight lining, and 10 ounces is a very nice lining that high-end designers might specify. For most projects, anything around five or six ounces per yard is just fine. These two samples are my favorite go-to linings, depending on if I want a lightweight or a more luxurious weight lining. One is five ounces and one is 10 ounces. So what does that mean? What does that look like? Well, without any light shining through them, here is my camera lens cap under the lightweight lining. This is a good weight to use if you have a heavyweight fabric that you want to protect but you don't want to add any more bulk. Or if you want to allow as much light through the treatment as possible. Or if you don't have to worry about light at all, like on a bed skirt or a shower curtain. Here is the same lens cap under the heavier lining fabric. Using a lining like this is good if you want to make lightweight fabric look better or even more expensive. It will give a lot more body and stability and reduce the light passing through a thin fabric making it look richer and less washed out in bright light. So here's a fairly inexpensive home deck fabric I picked up at Joanne Fabrics. Behind it are two samples of an average run-of-the-mill lining fab fabric, maybe five or six ounces per yard. The lining half on the left is white, and the lining half on the right is ivory. 
the area around the outside shows how it looks unlined on a bright sunny day. As you can see without lining, the fabric is kind of washed out and being all cotton, it will fade in no time at all. But what I really want to talk about is the difference between white and ivory lining. Unless the background of your decorative fabric is white, most people opt for ivory lining. The reason almost always is that they think it coordinate, coordinates better with the face fabric and that white is too stark, or that pure white won't look as good on the outside of the house as ivory. I'm going to debunk all that stuff in a moment, but the most important reason to consider the color of the lining is a completely different one. As you can see, ivory lining, by being ivory, has some yellow in it. In addition, the color of sunlight during the day has some yellow in it. As light passes through, that yellow changes the appearance of your face fabric. And if you look closely, you can see that here. The more yellow in the lining, the more your fabric will change color. With white lining, you will always be sure to get a pure and true representation of the colors in your decorative fabric. Regarding how it coordinates with the face fabric, the lining is almost always only seen from the back. You don't see the two fabrics directly next to each other, so coordinating them with each other isn't important. Regarding how it looks from the outside, here are six different types of lining, from lightweight to blackout in both white and ivory, from pretty close up. It's kind of a crummy photo, but still, you can barely tell the difference from this perspective. And from the street, it would make no difference at all. The important thing is that by lining your window treatments, you have a nice, neutral, uniform look from the street, no matter what colors you choose for your different rooms. Red curtains in one room, blue draperies in another, a colorful print on a Roman shade in a third room. When lined, it will all look neutral and beautiful from the outside, which is another benefit of lining all your window treatments that I forgot to mention in part one of this tutorial. And just to blow your mind, see how these all look pretty much alike from the outside? Well, here they are from the inside with a piece of fabric in front of them. As you can see, the right lining makes a big difference and the right color is almost always white. Next up, interlining. Interlining is a soft flannel-like material that's made to go in between your face fabric and your lining fabric. It is a third layer on your window treatment. It comes in different weights, textures, and colors, just like standard lining. It can be very lightweight, as shown here, which is primarily used to add a little extra body to thin or flimsy fabrics all the way to very thick ones like these incredible interlinings called bump. So what are these really heavy ones for? Well, originally, interlining was used by rich folks in fancy homes for the practical and very real purpose of excellent light control and insulation against heat, cold, and drafts. It didn't hurt either that it was an opportunity to show up their wealth. Not only could they afford full-length custom draperies, but they could afford to interline them too. Back then, draperies were the only way to control anything on the windows, and lush interlined draperies acted then and now like a beautiful, functional blanket on the window. Although we have so many options today for light and heat control, there is still a place for beautifully interlined draperies, even in expensive inexpensive, ready-made silk or faux silk panels that you can pick up at any box store will often have a lightweight interlining to add body, light control, and protection. Interlining allows you to add more light control than you have with just standard lining alone, but doesn't fully block it out. It's a high-end element that really is a game changer. If you like this idea, but three layers is a bit much in both material cost and labor cost, you can get a combination lining like this one. One side of the fabric is a nice woven cotton sateen, but the back is flannel. 
it's a good compromise in a lot of situations. This photo shows our white and ivory lining plus a piece of interlining placed behind them. You can see it cuts out quite a bit more light but isn't room darkening. And because it's not pure white, you can see it changes the appearance of the lining color when light passes through it. So as I mentioned before, stick with pure white on all of your lining layers whenever possible. Lastly, let's look at black outlining. Black outlining does just what it says. It blocks out 100% of the light coming through a window. Great for nurseries, or if you need to keep daylight at bay for any reason. There are several types of blackout lining and the differences are most important when it comes to the drapeability of the lining as well as the application you're using it in. And it's also available as a combination fabric with interlining for those of you that aren't playing when it comes to insulating and blocking light. Here's our decorative fabric over blackout lining. Since no daylight gets to it, you get a true and consistent color representation of your decorative fabric both day and night. Let's take a few minutes to talk about things to think about with this product. The most common and least expensive type of blackout lining is often called basic blackout or three-pass lining. It's moderately heavy and quite stiff. This photo helps demonstrate the feel, also known as the hand of the fabric, how it feels in your hand when you drape it or gather it. Stiffness is important when it comes to application. On the positive side, if you have simple tab top or grommet top panels, or you want to make a tailored balance, this is a great option. The advantage of blackout lining on a tailored balance is that you can make your window look taller by installing the valance several inches above the window and because there's no visible light line or shadow line during the day where the glass ends and the wall begins, you can convincingly create the illusion that your window is much taller than it really is. On the other hand, if you want to gather your drapery panel or curtain or valance on a rod, you want to swag your fabric into pretty swoops or add bulky pleats, you're going to have a problem with this type of blackout lining. Another common mistake is that people often try and make Roman shades using blackout lining because the stiffness makes it a great option for flat or tailored treatments, but this type of lining leaves holes wherever you put a needle through it. So if you machine sew your hems, and you hand sew on Roman shade rings onto the back, or you machine sew Roman shade tape onto the back during the day, you will see a thousand little pinholes of light and there's nothing you can do to fix it. Here's another kind of blackout lining. This one's called Gemini. This is a 95% blackout lining. It's quite a bit more expensive than basic blackout lining, but it's very soft very flexible and it's self-healing. That means that instead of your needle literally punching a hole in the lining fabric, the fibers move back to surround the thread once the needle goes out of it. So it's a better option for times when there's stitching in the body of your treatment or if you want to gather or swag your treatment. Fortunately, there are also options that fall in between these two examples. The bottom line, be sure to take the time to touch, feel, drape, and hold your blackout lining up to the light after poking a needle through it because making the correct choice here can really make the difference between a great success and a disaster. So let's wind it up. Here's our decorative fabric with standard lining on the top a combination of lining and interlining in the middle, and blackout lining on the bottom. Lining is hugely important and can make or break your window treatment. Please subscribe to my channel if you found this video helpful and informative. As I add videos on how to make different types of window treatments, 
I will also include advice on figuring out how much fabric and lining to buy, so watch for those upcoming videos. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and happy designing and sewing.